Hey everyone, hope you're well. All right then, Big Wreck and Ian Thornley. Now, here's a, a guy who not only is one heck of a guitar player and songwriter, but uh, his vocal range and style has often been compared to arguably the greatest hard rock metal vocalist of all time. Chris Cornell of Soundgarden. That is a whole heck of a lot of talent wrapped up in one individual, I have to say. And this from a guy who was simply a guitar player first and foremost. Uh, when an early iteration of Big Wreck couldn't find a lead vocalist that they were happy with, Ian stepped up and said, screw it, I'll do it myself. Uh, Ian Thornley and Big Wreck uh, have and had uh, an interesting musical style, uh, though in a general sense they're pretty much considered post-grunge. Their sound is a bit more diverse than that. Uh, you can think of it as somewhat of a cross between Led Zeppelin, Soundgarden, and, and ZZ Top, I suppose. Uh, the Soundgarden comparisons are rather obvious. Uh, however, a fair amount of the band's tracks and riffs uh, have somewhat of a bluesy southern rock feel to them as well, such as this one to the Oaf. Uh, this one almost has like a hard rock bluegrass feel to it. Uh, really interesting riff. Uh, plus, Ian is a heck of a slide guitar player, which lends itself quite well when they instill a bit of that bluesy southern flavor to their music. Big Rex started out as a half-Canadian, half-American collaboration of Berkeley College of Music students, and they hit the ground running with their 1997 debut album, In Loving Memory, with the Oaf as lead-off single going top 10 on the Billboard mainstream rock charts. This was quickly followed by the release of its follow-up single, That Song, which went top 40 on the rock charts. Instant success, pretty much, and they were all over MTV at the time. Things were looking good for the new band. And then, they disappeared. Poof. Barely a, a two-hit wonder in the States, and then done. Uh, here in Canada, however, the album did much, much better, uh, charting two more singles from In Loving Memory, with Blown Wide Open and Under the Lighthouse. Uh, and they continued to find success in Canada with that album's follow-up, 2001's The Pleasure and the Greed. Uh, an album that was sadly all but ignored stateside in the U.S., and shortly thereafter the band broke up, likely fueled by the lack of worldwide success for their sophomore effort. If I were to propose a theory as to why it just didn't happen for these guys, it would be that their timing was off by about 10 years. Uh, somewhat of a progressive post-grunge outfit with, like I said, shades of southern, classic rock. They just happened to be bringing this sound into a market that was in decline in 1997. Grunge had had its run. Classic rock, hard rock and metal were falling fast out of the mainstream at this point, with new metal's hybrid of hip-hop and metal being the only genre making much of a dent on the hard rock charts in the late 90s. It was simply the right band, but unfortunately the wrong time for Big Wreck. Uh, I'm certain that if these guys had hit the ground in 91 or 92, they'd have gone on to find much greater worldwide success, primarily because they were really bloody good at what they did. Uh, mainstream rock was just going nowhere, however, in and around the turn of the millennium. Ian Thornley would return to Canada after the breakup, form his own band with his name front and centre, and go on to enjoy a, a fair amount of success over the years within the Canadian music scene, producing music very much in the same vein as what he recorded and produced with Big Rec back in the late 90s. Uh, Big Rec finally reunited in and around 2010-2011 and have been going strong ever since, touring constantly within Canada and still releasing quality music, albeit the only ears listening at this point are Canadians for the most part. So I implore you, if you like the idea of a slightly more subdued sounding Soundgarden, uh, we Canadians like to refer to them as Canada's Soundgarden, uh, with a lead vocalist who sounds eerily like Chris Cornell, with hints here and there of classic rock, prog rock, blues, and southern rock, all imbued with some absolutely killer guitar hooks and solos, you could do a hell of a lot worse than checking out either Ian Thornley's solo work or his more recent work with Big Wreck. 
the uh, the down tempo uh, rocker Albatross from 2013 is a very good place to start. Uh, uh, just a killer track which shows off Thornley's soaring Cornell-like vocals with some gorgeous slide guitar work strewn throughout. This track alone should have put Big Wreck back on the international rock map, but alas, like I said previously, it was only a hit here in Canada. Uh, your loss, I suppose. Uh, well, that is just about enough chit-chat. Let's have a look at the, uh, the killer dual riffs that started it all back in 1997. In my opinion, one of the very best guitar riffs of the past 25 years. Let's close in here, learn how to play The Oaf by Ian Thornley and Big Wreck. All right then, let's have a look at how to play the first of two very cool riffs that open the Oaf, My Luck is Wasted, by Ian Thornley and Big Wreck. Uh, we are in rather unorthodox tuning for this one. We are in G flat 5 open tuning. Now a G flat 5 chord is not unorthodox, it's simply a G flat power chord. Your, your first interval here, your G flat, and uh, your fifth right there, the C sharp, the fourth fret of the A string, a G flat power chord. So for a, a G flat five open tuning, we're tuning every string on the guitar to just those two notes, all G flats and all C sharps. C sharp, G flat, C sharp, G flat, G flat, C sharp. So that is the tuning for this one. I've never come across this tuning before, uh, and not a whole lot of bands use it. I'd never heard of it before until I sat down to learn this one, but it sounds lovely open. It's kind of like an open power chord uh, tuning with octaves, I suppose you can look at it. Uh, as far as tone goes for this one, we're on the neck uh, pickup uh, for the intro. We're going to switch to the bridge for the main heavier riff that comes in a little bit later. Uh, the effects on this, uh, the studio version, there's tons of effects. There's phaser and there's tremolo and there's delay and there's reverb. Really, really difficult to nail the tone on this one because yeah, you, you have to get the strumming in time with the, uh, the delay and also in time with the tremolo. Uh, really tricky, uh, but if you want to try, I just have a little bit of chorus on and a little bit of reverb uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. We're not getting into all the tremolo and whatnot, but if you want to try to nail this tone or, or get close, a lot of tremolo. It's uh, If you have a speed and intensity setting on your tremolo pedal or on your amp, set them to about 75-80%. You want a pretty fast chop, a good wah 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 and a delay at 450 milliseconds with one repeat maybe two but you don't want a whole lot of repeats uh, some plate reverb will get you close and some phaser uh, you know fairly light if you have a phaser pedal put it on one or two and that should get you in the ballpark uh, I'm just going with a little bit of chorus just to make it sound nice but uh, the you know the tone is is very cool on this one uh, so uh, let's have a look at how to play it though because that's what this tutorial is all about we're gonna take this little passage and we're gonna play it six times with variations. Bouncing off the fifth fret of the high E with our middle finger three times. Off to the open E string. The first two times you hit the open E, you're going to hit them twice. And then we're going to go four, seven, four, open. The first four twice, the seven twice, back to four then off to open three times. So the whole thing put together. And like I said, we're going to repeat that little passage six times with variations, also playing it along with open strings. We're going to play the whole thing uh, every time along with the open B string. Kind of like that. Now, you don't want too much gain. Uh, I forgot to mention, uh, you know, just a little bit. You just want to hear a little tiny bit of crunch. You know, when you dig in, you get a little bit of bite. But when you play lightly, it's it's pretty clean. Anyway, the first time you, uh, you play this, that little passage, you're going to catch the G string as well. But finish the rest of it and just let the G string ring. But finish the rest of the passage just playing along uh, with the open B string. Catching the G string the first time. So 
that's the first two playthroughs of that little passage. Now we're going to drop our middle finger on the fifth fret of the G string, get our ring finger down here on the five, still doing the fours and sevens with our index and pinky. On the first down stroke, you're going to catch that G string and let it ring, play the rest of it just on the B and the high E. And then again. Now, the fourth uh, time we play this little passage, to finish up, we change things up a little bit. We drop down here to the fours with our index on the four of the G and our middle finger down here on the four of the high E. And again, downstroke uh, the G string first, let it ring, and finish the rest of the passage just on the B and the high E. Kind of like that. This is the hardest part of this whole riff because you really got to get up on your fingertips here when you're on the fours to reach up there to that seven with your pinky. I hope this is clear. Up to that point. This is really slow. same two passages that we opened it with. Alright, I hope that was clear. Let's go through the whole thing up to that point before we do the little outro of the first riff. A little more uh, closer to speed. to the little outro. So we're going five to four to two on the G string. And then when you get to that two of the G, you're playing along with the open G and open E. Strum a little bit, you know, five or six times. Again, third time we're going to go five to four again, but now we're going to slide up to seven and then slide back to two. And now slide into four, off to the open strings. And there you can pretty much strum the whole, the whole fretboard. tone going uh, for the tutorial part of, uh, of learning this one because uh, it's a lot more of a, a hard rock tone and uh, it's kind of like a bluegrassy type of hard rock it's very cool uh, anyway that's it for the intro uh, let's have a look at the uh, the heavier riff the uh, riff the cool riff number two to the oaf all right so now we're down on the uh, bridge pickup <laughs> Let's get rid of that chorus. That is such a wicked riff. The first time I heard that riff, I was like, what the hell is that? It's one of the greatest riffs I've ever heard. And no one ever plays it anymore or talks about it, you know? It's a fantastic riff. Uh, I guess the problem is, is that you can't just pick up a guitar and play this one. You gotta tune your guitar to G flat five open tuning in order to play it. It's impossible to play on a standard, standard tuned guitar. But, uh, just a great riff. Uh, so we're playing octaves here, and uh, I'm gonna show you all the notes first, and then you, you kind of just, uh, you know, it's easier that way, and then you can just add the octave to give it full effect. 
that's what we're doing, sliding three to four of the A string, off to open A twice, onto the five of the A, back to open A, back onto three, slide it back into four, double hit of the open A, grab the third fret of the low E, and then back to A. But we're going to play the whole thing with octaves, dropping our uh, ring finger on the third fret of the. Uh, <clears throat> you're, you're basically, you know, keeping your fingers in line here, uh, where we're starting on the third fret of the A. Now we've got our ring finger down here on the third fret of the G, kind of muting the D string in between them, playing those together. And when you go to the open strings, you're just playing the A, D, and G all together open. See what I mean? When you're on the open strings, you're just playing the open strings. Now we're going to play it again. But at this point, when you go from three to four for the second time, you're going to hit the open E and then grab a double stop there at the 7th fret of the D and the G string and give it a little waggle. Repeat. Now this time, when you go to the 3 to 4 uh, the second time through this passage of it, you're going to do a, a little down up mute and then bar the fifth fret of the D, G, and B string and hit those twice. At a slow speed like this, it doesn't sound quite the same, but at speed, kind of like that. Those little mutes in there work better when it's played at speed. Now the hardest part of the whole riff. That's tricky. So we're going to go three to four. Double hit of the open strings. Up to seven. Off to open, three to four again. Five, open. Three to four, open. of the notes but with octaves. But at speed it's really cool, really hard. Especially that. Because you're sliding and then you're picking. And uh, so that's the whole riff. Uh, so from the beginning. section there is A open, grab the third fret and back to open. And then uh, we're into the, the little uh, pre-chorus, just barring the fifth fret of the A, D, and G, off to open, grab that third fret of the low E again and back to open. second verse and that my friends is how you play pretty much all of uh, the oaf and uh, there's um, the solo in this one is pretty cool too I'm gonna give it a shot but uh, just for fun let me see if I got enough how's my tone here let's get rid of that so so <laughs>
anyway, I, uh, I certainly hope you found that uh, helpful uh, where you're looking to learn these, these two great riffs uh, to the oaf. And, uh, you know, drop me a subscribe if you haven't done that already. That would be awfully nice. Hit the notification bell uh, so you know when I upload something new. And uh, thank you, as always, for watching. And I hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world. And uh, go listen to some Ian Thornley and Big Wreck. Uh, you're missing out on some good hard rock music if you uh, if you've kind of haven't been keeping up with what these guys have been doing over the last uh, 20 years or so. Uh, take care of yourselves, those around you, and we will see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>